Okay, we're working on a few different things today. First up, I got this here box delivered. This, I believe, is the parts or the armrests for my F3. So, we're gonna find out. They already sent me the arm trough adapter kit, but supposedly inside this box is the actual armrests that go on that kit because they didn't send them to me for whatever reason. Oh, hey. Looky there, armrests. Yeah, they're the waterfall style ones. Now this is that, this is that sort of vinyl material that I think wears out pretty quickly. These look like the ones I had on my Amy Systems chairs years ago. Let's see, there should be a bracket in here too. Ah yes, and a joystick mounting bracket. Cool, joystick bracket, arm pad assembly, waterfall. Oh, it's from Pride Mobility. So apparently my new F3 Permobile is going to have pride parts on it. <laughs> Anyways, oh, let me grab something out of the van. I, uh, there's a coolant leak on the bus. I think I mentioned it a few videos back, but what I did was just grab sort of a generic elbow piece. Uh, let me go grab it real quick. Can you guess where I bought the parts from? <laughs> so there's a Wabasto diesel heater built into this bus from the factory. It's a very large 80,000 BTU one but it's designed to heat the engine coolant and also preheat the heating system inside the bus. Well, turns out it's a little bit old and decrepit, that Wabasto thing, and the boiler or burn box or whatever it has is a little bit rusty. There's a coolant pump that pulls coolant from the engine and then sticks it up through the boiler or the heater and then into the uh, heating system on the bus. Well, that little pump has a like a vein style water pump head on it and the seals on that one out. So what we're gonna do is, is basically just bypass that with this. I measured the size of the pipe and then kind of guesstimated the length. So I think this should work. It's one and a half inch diameter. That's just feeding the heating system. Got some hose clamps. And then the only thing I don't know is how much coolant we're gonna lose in the process. Looking through the service manual, it says I can close some valves and it should isolate it mostly. But one of the coolant lines comes directly from the engine and the radiator is about six feet in the air on this thing. The system holds 21 gallons. So I don't know if the radiator is gonna backfeed all that or what. So I'm hopefully banking on the fact that I can catch some of it with this bucket and we won't lose more than six gallons. So I got some of this, uh, peak pre-charged diesel oil. This is that cherry red stuff. But this stuff has a 800,000 mile rating. It's not very cheap. Anyways, it's pretty nice weather today. I think I might try and swap this hose on there. It's one of those things that could potentially get out of control in a hurry. I mean, like if I try to take the pipe off and they're rusty enough that things are broken, but I think I'm removing all the broken parts. So I guess we'll see. There is also a hatch inside the back of the bus that allows me to get right to it. So one of those things I've been putting off, but I need to take care of it before the weather gets really cold. Because right now, if you fire up the engine and you build any pressure in the cooling system, it just starts leaking. I'm gonna eat my lunch right now. Then we're gonna try and figure out what's going on with this. I'll at least show you what I'm talking about here. It's a little bit dark in here, but you can see right here, we've got sort of a coolant pump. Line comes in, goes into that pump head, and then straight up. What I'm gonna do, that entire pump is just held on with a hose clamp. So the plan is to remove that pump and then basically just use that 90 to go from here straight up to there. And I think we should be good. But that coolant line, as you can see, goes through that elbow straight to the side of the engine block. Uh, water pump is up here. So I don't know where in the system that is or if it bypasses the thermostat. There are some valves back there that isolate that half. Sorry, this is really hard to film. There are some valves back there that isolate that half, but it's this section right here that I'm not sure about. And our radiator is up there, like, all the way up there. So 
I guess we'll see what happens. Oh, by the way, here's the color of the coolant. See, it's a lovely cherry red color. I put some in that tray so I can make it into jello later. But anyways, that's what we're looking at. I'm gonna tackle it here in a little bit. Okay, so there's one thing I wanted to point out real quick. I'm editing this video and realized I didn't explain. That coolant pump is only for when the diesel heater is fired up. The coolant for the heating system flows through there being pushed around by the, turns out the engine has multiple water pumps, but when the engine's not running and you're using the diesel heater, you don't have the flow from the mechanical water pump on the engine. So taking this out doesn't affect the operation of the heat when the engine is running. This is just kind of a temporary bypass until later on I can get the parts I need to fix that pump head, but that's pretty far down the list at this point before I uh, am gonna worry about that. Then as far as putting these armrests on, I'll probably wind up doing that tomorrow maybe. I'm not sure, but anyways, we'll get it done. So check it out, here we are in the back and this hatch pulls off and this is our coolant line right here. Go, we're basically gonna go from here to here and I think that should take care of it. I'm gonna get to work and see what happens. Um, okay, I guess this is one of those things where you should trust the service manual. Here's the pump, took it off, look at that. Not even one drop of coolant coming out of here. Um, sweet. Well, I've got my line trimmed, so we're gonna try and fit this on here now. And uh, yeah, easier than I thought, I think. Well, shouldn't say that out loud. Not gonna lie, I'm a little bit confused. I think I just did this in 10 minutes. It would appear as though we have a bypass hose installed. I threw the pump out there on the ground. Um, yeah, this worked beautifully. Got the clamps on there. I trimmed the hose and uh, yeah. Whew, tired. So I think at this point, the only thing left to do, the only thing left to do now is to fire this thing up and test it. But I've got to run to a friend's, a friend's place and pick some stuff up real quick. So I'm gonna try and make it back before dark, which actually, what time is it? It's almost four now. It gets dark a little bit before five. So, cool. Pleasantly surprised. Eh, hey, what the heck, I'm already here. I'm gonna turn the key and see what happens. Okay, so the way this system works is there's a little sight glass way up there and there's a coolant tank down here. So you hit this switch to run the pump and it refills the cooling system. And I think you might be able to see the sight glass there. We're gonna open up this side door though and uh, add a little bit more coolant to this tank, which that is right here, engine coolant fill. Go. Let me go grab some. All right. Well, I think we are good to go for now. Cool. That was uh, a little bit faster than I thought it would be. It seems as though we have a package. I picked this up from the mailbox uh, last week sometime, and it's been sitting over here, and I kind of forgot about it. So let's see what we have. I get the feeling that it's coffee from the way the box sounds, but we'll find out. Let's see here. So we've got some Amazon Fresh, uh, Columbia Medium Roast. What else we got here? Ah, the Donut Shop Blend from Real Good Coffee Company in Seattle. San Francisco Bay Coffee Fog Chaser. Okay, so this is a really dark roast. I've heard about this. I feel like I might have had it once when I was traveling somewhere, but yeah. Um, we have coffee. Ah, this is from Bruce. Thank you, sir. 
I think I've still got more stuff out at the mailbox. I probably need to go back there. They've been spamming my emails with stuff. So I think we're gonna start with this. I think I have to buy a coffee grinder. Yeah, I think I might have gotten rid of mine actually. <laughs> at the last stages of moving from the house there, I was kind of just donating everything to Goodwill and throwing stuff away and I don't remember packing a coffee grinder. Anyways, um, they're cheap on Amazon, I'll have to get one of those. But yes, thank you for the coffee. It is, uh, it's always welcome. Okay, it's the next day. We're gonna install the armrests on the F3. So let me get the thing over here. So here we have the new F3, and as you can see, we've got the stock super wide armrests on it. Now for me, combined with this backrest, they're not really compatible, and also I can't drive my van because they stick out wider than the drive tires on the chair. And also if you notice here, they're kind of jammed into both sides of the seat back. So, we're going to install an arm trough adapter kit and waterfall armrests. So about two months after getting the chair delivered, we now finally have all the stuff that's required. Not sure what the deal was there, but hey, sometimes that stuff happens. So there's our arm bars. Here are the armrests. Like we saw earlier, just a standard Invicare slash Pride slash eh, whatever. So we got these two round bars. And these basically go in there, and then these bars mount to the chair. Got some hardware here in little Ziploc baggies. Screws for the permobile side, and it looks like screws for the adapters. I don't know. Seems like there's an awful lot of screws here, so let's get to taking this apart and see what we can find. Uh, I've got the USB charger on this chair, so we're gonna have to relocate that somewhere else. I was planning on probably putting it down here on one of the side rails or something anyways. Um, so yeah, we can just pull that off. By the way, this is not really a how-to video. I'm just, uh, just putting stuff on the chair for now. There we go, charge module. Oh, they changed the design. So on the previous chairs, there was a bolt right here and you just pull this bolt off and the whole armrest would come off. Looks like they've kind of simplified things. Oh, they've gotten rid of the rotation thing. So on the previous chairs, they were all set up so that you could loosen some screws and rotate this armrest like, I don't know, 40 degrees either direction. It's like they've removed that now and they just have a solid rail mount system. So I guess that makes it easier for us. All we gotta do is take these loose and our armrest should just pop right off of here. And that just slides right off. Interesting. But yeah, there used to be another layer inside here. So they've kind of simplified that, which is nice. I don't know of a lot of people that use the left and right adjustable, like, armrest adjustment. I don't know, words. <laughs> I don't know a lot of people that use that feature anyways, so I guess they decided just to omit it. I'm supposing you can order it if you need it. Yeah, you can see there, that's where the old attachment point used to be. Now we've got a couple different places we can mount these. We can mount them on the outside over here, or on the inside or on the outside over here. So what I need to do is figure out where I want this located exactly, which that's pretty close to the backrest. Let me grab one of the armrests and we'll test fit it. Actually that, doesn't look too bad. And it's just a fabric right there. Yeah, I think this will work. Cool. Well, we're going to we're going to use the uh, the inside mounting here. So let me uh, let me get this mocked up, and I'll be right back. So these are held together with screws that go through this base plate, and then through that arm bar. So let's pull these out for now. And our arm bar goes in there like that the other way there we go and then our tapered head screws are gonna fit down in there and when you tighten those up that's what sets the position of your armrest 
I'm just kind of putting stuff together right now and gonna double check to make sure it's lined up the way I want it before we actually lock everything down on here. Oh, I guess this piece of plastic here just kind of like kind of floats in the breeze. Weird. Yeah, so there's nothing really holding that on. That's uh... Well, looks like a pride product for you. <laughs> Jeez. Well, it's on there. It's <laughs> like bent though. Look at that. There's just warps down right there. I've got three screws in, so it's supported all the way along. And look at this. This plastic piece is just kind of hanging out here. And that's on the inside. So you have to be careful not to get caught on that. <sighs> well, at least they gave me the parts. I think I'm gonna have to get some different armrests on my own from eBay or something, because yeah, that that's not gonna last very long. I mean, this plastic's already flexed. Uh, eh, whatever. I guess I'll swap the one on the other side and see what it looks like. Now, this side's a little bit different because we have the joystick mount on here, but I should be able to just remove this and set the entire assembly in the chair without having to unhook any wires or anything like that. Wait a minute. Oops. Let me check my parts real quick. I think they sent me the wrong one. Now that I'm looking at this. Yeah, this is for, this is for a completely different style of joystick mount. This is for one of the ones that has a, a bar that's attached to the joystick that goes back. Okay, well at least this is cut out in a way that allows it to attach to the bar. This is designed, actually here, the chair I'm sitting in right now. See how this chair has this bar that goes back? So that clamp is designed to hold one of these bars and that attached, attaches to the swing away or retractable joystick mount or whatever they call it. So my new chair doesn't have this bar. Hmm. Okay, well I got a little bit creative here. Maybe this is how it's supposed to work, I don't know. But this bracket right here was facing backwards before. So I took this screw out and there's some teeth down here in the swing away. I rotated that 90 degrees. Then I pulled this bracket off because it used to be over here. Flipped it around the other way. And now I think this bar should mount on there. And if you notice, it's right on the center line of the joystick. So we might be able to completely get away with not using this at all. Well, we won't be using that because it's the wrong part for this application, but okay. I think I might've figured this out. I'm gonna get this bar off and then get the adapters on, mount this thing and see where we're at. I think we got it figured out. I just sat in the chair, things seemed to line up okay. But this bracket modified and flipped around and blah, blah, blah. We've got two screws here and then there's a couple of nylocks that go down here that hold that together. We've got our adapters back here that hold this onto the chair and then we can flip the whole thing up and attach our armrest with the available space on the bottom there. The joystick is still a bit lower, but I think it'll be okay. Cool. Well, I'm going to finish tightening this all up and I will be back. Alrighty then, there's the basic install. They seem to go in here. They're about the right length for what I need. We got the swing away attached here. The only problem is now is these are obviously three and a half inches higher than the old armrests. So we're gonna have to go around here on the back and make some adjustments to the height, which involves loosening up these four screws and turning this thing. I've covered that a billion times. You use this really long Allen wrench that's stored in the back of the chair. So I'm gonna get this adjusted real quick. The only potential issue I'm seeing is the clearance between this side uh, support here and this thing. As you can see, it is tilted up a little bit. I did find I can adjust this to adjust our angle. So I might be able to adjust that out and effectively get our joystick closer to the same height here. But yeah. I'm gonna make a few more adjustments, hop in and out of this a couple times and I'll show you the final product.
Well, I'm gonna call that good for now. It, uh, it fits me. As you can see, there's kinda, I don't know, these pride armrests are not the best things in the world, but they'll get the job done. I'm probably gonna order some different armrests on eBay and swap them out. I mean, these could be a little bit longer. I told him to send me the ones that were the same length as what was on the chair, but these are clearly shorter than that. So, I don't know. It works for now, it's comfortable, I can sit in it. And as you can see, our armrests now are actually a little bit narrower than the tires. We don't have the giant ones sticking out, case in point. Yeah, see, these are supposed to be the same length. Eh, whatever. I'm just glad it's my chair and not someone else's that they have to deal with. I mean, maybe that's why, I don't know. I, I mean, the DME does know I do the YouTube thing and I do repair chairs and all that. So maybe some of this was because of that and they're like, oh, well, he can figure it out. We don't need to worry about it. But still at the same time, it's like, why don't we just do it the way it was ordered? Eh, uh, yeah. Anyways, I'm done screwing around with it for tonight. I can sit in the thing and run around and be fine. I'm gonna worry about this cable management stuff later. Uh, I guess I could just clip these in here. Eh, I'll get those zip tied up. And then also our cell phone charger over here, I think it's just dangling in the breeze. Yeah. I'm probably gonna mount that on the side rail here somewhere. I guess I could go face up. I was thinking about rain, but it's got the little rubber plug. Eh, I don't know, whatever. So I'm gonna call that good, or at least good enough for who it's for. <laughs>